Hey everybody, it's Stone here, and welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy. Last time, I showed you the very final star in the entire game. You may be wondering, what's this? What could this video possibly be? Well, like I said last time, there were a couple little things that I didn't show that uh, appear after the credits. I didn't show them in the finale. They are these messages. And uh, in these messages, it says something about Rosalina's storybook and the library. Well, the library was a part of the observatory that I never went to, and I never went to it on purpose. Um, now, I'm not 100% sure whether or not that a part of the library shows up after you beat the, the grand finale galaxy, so just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go back to my 100%ed file here that has all 121 stars with both characters both characters, and uh, hop into this. Now you could have enjoyed sections of this throughout the game as you played because different things were added. I'm sure you saw that message a few times during the let's play. But I wanted to save it all to the end so it was one continuous story and uh, so that it was just a relaxing way to end this uh, kind of long journey that we've had. So, right here is the library. We talk to this Luma. Mama's library is in here. Let's walk in. It's got its own music. It's kind of like a dome. Let's read this. Start of Chapter 1, The Celestial Duo. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days, and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fix up the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the, star into the starry sky. And this is how the search, began the search for the celestial mother began. Chapter 2. Star Bits Days pass with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea. But... I forgot to bring water! At this... Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window only to find a turquoise blue comet shivering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that comet! 
The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4 The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? she asked, her mother's re retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied. These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, why? The pair traveled through the starry skies, and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma. The rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there, the girl said busily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture, unlike any they'd ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and a gate, it was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked, despite the two Lumas gleefully. The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot luma parroted back, My mama, my mama! My mama, my mama! The two lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more lumas began to pop out of the apricot planet. They were all different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, 
She would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7, The Telescope After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on the hill on bright and windy days. And... I want to go home! I want to go home right now! The girl burst into tears, and the Lumas didn't know what to do. I want to go home! I want to go back to my house by the hill! I want to see my mother! The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky, because, because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed throughout the stars, and a hush fell over the area. Chapter 8 The Wish Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me! And don't be sad about your mama, because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love star bits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop her tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea! I will transform into a comet, a soaring comet that can carry you on this journey. With that, Luma, trailing bands of white, soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The ground shook, and a bright light poured out, over, poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail, and then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes. But how? she kept asking. Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into different things, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we can become all of these things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone's special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in, that Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All of the Lumas together said, no more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper, and she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, star bits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final Chapter Family With its many Lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the Lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new Luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone! Let's make a cake! A cake sprinkled with star bits! Then it will be a star cake! The Lumas excitedly be began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. <clears throat> I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes a mother happiest.
That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home every once in a while, once every hundred years to nap in my favorite... But it would be nice to return home once every hundred years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carrying the Lumas and the girl continues on its journey to this very day. With more family members in tow than can be counted, it's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every hundred years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The End And that's it. That's just about every part of Super Mario Galaxy that can be shown. I want to thank you all so much for watching this entire Let's Play. And, um,. You know, shout out to Nintendo for making uh, one of the greatest games of all time. This game uh, has always been my favorite, one of my favorites since its release. Uh, I've been playing it since I was um, seven years old, and I, I don't think that this will be my last playthrough. I'll, I'll definitely play through this again sometime. So yeah. Thank you all so much once again, and I will see you soon for a new Let's Play. I don't know what it is going to be yet, but I'm going to leave it a surprise if I do get any ideas. See you guys then.